strangers approaching! Ah, the humble or not so humble retailer. It's how we get to experience the gaming experiences we share with you. Whether it be to a shop or a traveling merchant, we love stopping our quests to cough up all our money. Or sell all our shit so we don't have to carry a billion bronze daggers. It's almost like making free money! While most of these guys we mainly love for more technical reasons. I mean, while cops are on my ass, it sure is nice to know a guy with a rocket launcher. Some of these guys are just so more memorable, we thought we had to make a list of them. For their over-the-top salesmanship, their weird-ass designs, and likable personalities, we love these guys. And you should too. Thank you! It's no secret that a merchant's most valued attribute is his or her customers. More customers equals more money, and that's more than music to the ears of Anna, 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 and Anna. Anna is everywhere at every time, and that's what makes her one of the most interesting characters in the Fire Emblem series. Not only is she a good businesswoman on her own, but she, along with her god knows how many sisters, all by the name Anna, mind you, maintain a strict business code of recording all of the transactions they make, and report them to each other. Imagine how difficult that must be to maintain. Bet you the Nurse Joys couldn't do that. And in both cases of the Nurse Joy effect, where the hell are the parents? Like, Jesus Christ, props to them for raising a seemingly endless amount of kids. Do they even know how many they have? Prior to Awakening, the character Anna only appeared in secret shops and other prompts like save deletion. Not really anything to point out there aside from her trademark sly smile. But now, she's appeared playable for the first time and shared her charming and flirty personality, as well as her persistent, basically extortions, with everyone who picked up the game. I mean, right from the moment you meet her, you know everything that makes up her drive is money, money, money. She'll take it from your enemies, she'll take it from your allies, and she'll even take it from you, without so much as a second thought. You know you're doing something right when you're sucking up their money as if you're their overspending wife, and you still manage to get away with it. This little beauty is basically a thief, and we know it. But we just don't care. We love her, and now you love her too. No buts about it. Keep this up and someday I may love you more than money. <laughs> no, seriously. DLC Quest sure is a whack game. Its simple premise thrives on the parody element of a near distant future, where all games come in alpha form, and DLC must be purchased for just about everything. And no surprises in guessing who you purchased the DLC from, the DLC Merchant Shopkeeper. Shopkeep, Dime, Nickel, whatever you want to call him, the DLC Merchant from DLC Quest is a right laugh. Thanks to the Canadian blokes at Going Loud Studios, with humour drier than... Um... Humour drier than... Canadian Dry? Selling just about anything, even when dead, such dedication, from guns to zombies to sexy outfits, for reasonable prices, the DLC Merchant is a straight to the point, honest, yet illogical chap. No, not that kind of chap. Kind of the type of merchant you'd want not nosy around over your purchase. Yet he's not just a merchant, this bloke. His humour does give him special merit for the list, but in the pack-in sequel, here's the, spoiler alert, final boss, where he shows his passion for gobbling all that DLC money. Contrastingly, he also wishes to own all the DLC he sells, which he can't, as he can't help but sell it away for more of that DLC money, leaving a confused soul in a heat of rage throwing coins, helmets, top hats and swords for the protagonist to purchase and slay their very own merchant when to bring him back to sanity. Well, that's what I interpret anyway. The ultra-unfathomable sword pack puts Kirby to shame and manages to destroy the whole universe just from one man and his passion of DLC money. Yes, it really went there. And hey, you don't even have to feel bad for the freemium microtransaction loving guy when you beat him. As I hear in the prequel, EA will hire him in a heartbeat. The Resident Evil franchise might not be the most likely candidate for hosting one of the greatest merchants of all time. What with all the crap trying to kill you every other second? But if you played the fourth entry in the main franchise, you probably know where this segment is headed. What are you buying? The merchant from Resident Evil 4 allows Leon to stock up on supplies, or sell them, or trade them for other stuff. Because he's a merchant, and that's what they do. Anyway, this one's got balls just wandering into an area where someone or something is always trying to rip your face off. Or maybe they already did rip his face off. 
Can't really tell with the mask he's wearing. Lovely color it's got too, I love the purple. <laughs> Thank you. Despite being an absolute badass, he does seem a little shady. He's usually just there, appearing in locations that probably would not be very good for business. Like inside caves and shit. Don't think the bats are too interested in shotgun rounds, but I might be wrong. I'm not a salesman. The thing putting the merchant over other entries on this list, however, is his behavior. He's always talking in this really overdramatic cockney accent that's made a meme of every single one of his lines. You probably heard such gold as, Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. And there's a lot of parody videos, like this one from Mega64 to name, uh, one. You don't trust him, but what choice do you have? He's your biggest source of ammo. So don't kill him. He's important, okay? Point is, he's a great character and a ballsy merchant willing to go to the extremes to keep his business flourishing. And his voice is epic, which all combined buys him a nice number three spot on this list. Hi, I'm Mr. 12603, but you can call me Mr. 12603. I'm a British countdown artist, like Stelios and the other ones. I run a mildly successful countdown channel that I like to randomly plug at completely inappropriate points of videos and in mid-conversation. <coughs> <coughs> My favorite games are Paper Mario, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, Super Paper Mario, and Pay Legend of Zelda and Ace Attorney. Mallow, the cool dude with attitude. Okay, I promise never to say that again. Mallow is an example of how appearances can certainly be deceiving. He may just seem to be a fairly mature, if a little grumpy kid. You wouldn't expect him to become this tactical, entrepreneurial mastermind. At the start of the game, you meet him in Ordon Village, but before long, he'll be running the Kakuriko Goods Shop, going under the alias, the Hero of Prices. But his true excellence only really comes into play when you give enough donations to the Goron Elders, who kindly inform you that a shop will need to be bought to lower the prices of various goods, Brother. So the shop in Hyrule Town is bought and given to Mallow. He turns Chudley's fine goods and fancy trinkets emporium into, well, this. Bright colours, some weird ass background music, and the silliest piece of headgear since Lou Boo make the aptly named Mallow Mark Castle Branch truly a sight to behold. While he may be more behind the scenes with this store, he's got his branding to his tee as his face is plastered all over the outside walls. Mallow absolutely deserves a place on this list for being the most successful Zelda businessman, with the possible exception of the time travelling beetle, being absolutely full of what we can only describe as boyish charm, and for being the only character in Twilight Prince that can outweird Miss Stag Beetle fetish herself. Now that is quite an accomplishment. Animal Crossing, one of the happiest games with some of the happiest characters. There's K.K. Slider, the smooth and classy jazz musician, Tortimer, the friendly and elderly mayor, and one of the most twisted, calculating business people in all of gaming. Tom Nook. He likes his coffee similar to me, with lots of milk and a little spoonful of sugar. It's the cheap Uncle Tanuki, Tom Nuki. M. Hall. At first seeming like a shady businessman using you for slave labor, Tom Nook is actually a shady businessman that is using you to pay your mortgage you hardly agreed to for some slave labor. In the game as innocent as Animal Crossing, this guy comes around just to kick you in the balls. Because his are probably bigger than yours. Owner of the ever-growing Nook Empire, he has a nose for business, and his customer service is second to none, apparently. I don't know why, but for some stupid reason, we get a total kick out of owing this raccoon money, and live solely for the purpose of paying our debts. We run around selling everything in sight, and for what? Oh boy, we can cram all of our nothing into a bigger space, because we sold everything to pay for it! What the balls?! This raccoon's a bloody genius. And it's this weird kick we get from the satisfaction of finishing one debt and onto another among the most varied wares on sale on the list. He's also the only merchant on the list to have a loyalty point system, and as we know from real life experiences, that's always a plus. 
Any chump can be a greedy, money-grabbing asshole, but Nook does it with style, with grace, with charm. You grow to like this guy despite your payments, and that's no small feat because, I mean, th there's a lot of payments. This species is known for getting into our garbage cans, but instead, this twat is getting into our pockets! I haven't played Animal Crossing, but he does this thing in Smash... This thing... And that... That's neat, I guess. I have nothing else to say, I'm sorry. And for all this and more, Tom Nook takes the number one spot for taking our hearts... And our money... And our plants... Our shells our vintage 8-bit furniture, and our pride. You know what? Fuck you, Tom Nook. Fuck you. Hi, I'm Ryder of Lightning. Thank you for watching our top 5 merchants and video games. If you're craving more countdown goodness, go over to Stelio 78910's channel over here to look at his top 10 sweet levels in gaming. If you're in the mood for something spooky, go over to Mr. 12603's channel. Jesus Christ, so many numbers. For top 5 most annoying enemies in Castlevania, you can also click any of our avatars to go directly to our channels. Anyway, until next time, see ya. And the number 0 spot goes to the weapon store guy from Castle Crushers. You thought we'd miss out. I thought we'd go a countdown with our castle crushers. Michael, we aren't a part of this one. He has a nose.